All right, joining me once again here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is my friend, artist and author Anne Elizabeth Moore. Anne is the founding editor of Best American Comics, the former editor of Punk Planet, a professor at the Art Institute of Chicago. She has a column at Truthout called Lady Drawers. She's also the author of Unmarketable, and her latest book is called Cambodian Girl, spelled <laughs> G-R-R-R-L, uh, all of which you can find at AnneElizabethMoore.com. And thanks so much for being on the show again. Oh, I love being on your show. <laughs> All right, so uh, so your so your book, Cambodian Girl, uh, <laughs> it docu it documents uh, uh, documents your time in Cambodia starting around two thousand seven. Uh, so so just let's lay it out for us. What exactly brought you to Cambodia? Yeah, so in two thousand and seven, I had been working at uh, Punk Planet magazine for about three and a half four years, and. Um, it became really clear that the government policy in U.S., postal service regulations, and various things in the U.S. had shifted just enough that we weren't actually able to put the magazine out on the same scale that we had been for, you know, 12 years up to that point. Right. And so I started looking at, like, ways that governments actually restrict freedom of expression. And as I was sort of, you know, Internet searching and Googling these terms, like, Cambodia came up really quickly as a place where... The country claims to be a democracy, but all the mm -hmm. time, you know, journalists are sort of threatened or silenced or injured or killed for printing the truth. And I mm -hmm. just became really re-fascinated with this place that, you know, in my lifetime had seen um, almost a quarter of its population killed in, uh, in a crazy genocidal but Cambodian-led regi uh, regime called the Khmer Rouge. That right. You know, in my lifetime, I had been watching this go down from the U.S. and sort of not realizing the role that the U.S. was playing. And so I just got, I got really interested in the place and started, you know, poking around and, and getting excited about it. And then it, eventually I was invited to come and live in this dormitory with these young women. So how did that actually come about, the fact that you were able to go there? Because you actually go there to, to, to teach them how to make zines. Uh, yeah. how, did that actually, how did that actually come about? Invited um, <clears throat> to live in the first. There was a, a, a dormitory had just opened up. It was the first in the in the rebuilding of the country um, mm -hmm. since the Khmer Rouge regime, which has taken forever. So in the mid 1990s, um, the nation actually started rebuilding its university system. But at that time, um, no one really paid attention to the rights of students or the necessity of students to have you know accessible housing. And mm -hmm. um, this wasn't a problem for most people because men were actually able to go and either live in monasteries if they were poor or rent apartments if they were rich. But the fact was that by 2006, there were almost no women attending university whatsoever because they're not allowed to rent apartments. They're not allowed to really live away from their home. Mm -hmm. And um, so they weren't going to school because they had yeah. options to live there. So this is the, the first dormitory to actually unite the largest group of students, uh, young women students in Cambodia to go to school at the same time. It had just opened in 2006, and miraculously they invited me to come and live with them for a little while. And, and, and they were like, come and do a project. And I was like, I only know how to do one thing, self-publishing. Uh -huh. And they were like, okay, we'll do that. And uh, it went really well. Yeah. So this is like again, it's not that like it's not that the sexism necessarily was written into law saying that women couldn't go to college, but just the way the society had it was structured, it was next to impossible for 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 young women to go and 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 find somewhere and, and actually physically be able to make it into into university essentially, right? That was kind of the yeah. way it was set up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all these like teeny little accidental things that people forgot to take into account, and they all ended up relating to gender issues on one hand. On the other hand, there are very strong traditions in Cambodia that define gender roles, and one of them, you know, we've discussed before, called is called New Girl Law, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, sorry, Girl Law, mm -hmm. which is actually, there are, there is a set of rules for girls and for boys that sort of dictate proper procedures for young people to enter society. And the rules for girls are very, very restrictive. And the fact is that Cambodia is an oral culture. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, um, you know, legally, things need to be written down in order to be interpreted as law. And so the fact that this was a book and this was written down, and it's also been handed down 
through generations of, of oral traditions meant that people were a little bit confused about whether or not this was law or just mm-hmm. tradition, and yeah. whether or not it was um, therefore punishable or, or dangerous to violate. And so the fact is that all of these things about women remaining quiet in groups of people and not attending university and not getting too smart and not necessarily learning how to write, mm-hmm. they didn't happen for right. years. And in fact, yeah. it's still very difficult to, to uh, bring women up to speed educationally because of the, the strict tradition of, of keeping them out. Right, and so and so you, you you're you're going over there and you're you're going to teach te- you're living in this is this dormitory with around around thirty students right and and you're there to to specifically teach these young young women how to uh, make a zine which bef- pretty much before this th- th- there's a lot of problems that co- not not but problems that you end up you know getting through and stuff but the effect that these that these young women they never really have really understood the, 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 the idea of writing for themselves and being able to express themselves and because that just wasn't that that just wasn't really taught to them it wasn't part of their society so talk, talk a little about that and just kind of the process of just explaining to, to, to these young women what a zine was and, and and the whole entire psychology behind it well and that was where like the title of the book ends up being this really funny joke because I was able to go and be like okay in America we have this thing and it's called riot girl and it uh-huh. means that girls who aren't necessarily allowed to make their own music or produce their own culture, they do it anyway. Right. And they were like, wow, that's interesting and fascinating and totally foreign. Like, <laughs> and look at it as this sort of anthropological thing that we do, as, as if we all do this in America, you know, that whatever, I get to make up what America is like right. when I'm traveling. And, 